In today's video, I'm going to give you a complete TikTok ads testing strategy so you know exactly when to keep working on the product because it has chances of winning or when to ditch the product, move on and start testing a new one. So let's go. But first, for those of you who know who I am, thank you so much for tuning in again and watching another video. And for those of you who have no idea who I am, my name is Jacob Wikowski. And since 2019, I have been working full time as an online marketer. And in January 2022, I decided to take on a new challenge. After seeing countless of gurus on YouTube claiming they are making millions of dollars with dropshipping, I decided to give it a go. After seeing how easy apparently it is to make this business work, I had to jump in. Now, unfortunately, my journey wasn't easy at all. In the first seven months of my journey, I lost over $18,000. I tested 25 plus different products it just didn't work for me. However, in the middle of July, 2022, I finally had my first breakthrough. I found my first winning product and only two months later, I managed to make enough profits to recover all of the losses and then continued on making huge profits months after that. And it just worked for me. So dropshipping is a good business model, but you definitely, you will have to spend much more money and time than you think to make it work. Let's jump into this video and I'm going to show you how to test your products on TikTok ads to find your first winner and finally start making that cash. Let's go. Okay, so before we get into the step-by-step -step action plan, let me first tackle a couple questions I know you guys will be asking because you're asking me this all the time. So the first question is, should you test products in one product store or a general store? Now, 100%, I always recommend one product store and it's not just because everybody else say is saying so, but it's because I actually spent money. I did real life test and I tested both uh, stores and I found that one product store was winning by far. I recorded entirely separate video showing you this test so I'm going to leave a link to this video in the description. And then the next question is okay if I need to use one product store how do I do it right? Do I need to create each store from scratch every time I'm testing products? What about domain names and everything else? And again I recorded a completely separate video explaining to you exactly how to use one product store to test products. So go ahead and watch that after this video to have more idea of how to do it right. Then the next question is, do I need UGC content for testing? So do I need to order the product to record the videos or send it to influencers and have my own videos when testing? And I'm here to tell you 1000% do not do that. This is going to burn your money. It's going to take a lot longer to test and it's just going to burn you a lot more because it's just going to complicate the process. And here's why I'm telling you not to do that. When I first found my pheromone perfume product, my winning product, I first of all, I didn't buy this product and I didn't send it to influencers for the first two months as I was selling it. Now, I couldn't even find any used content, any content online with this product I was selling. So essentially, I didn't even have anything to reuse. So what my video editor did was he took many different scenes from videos from YouTube and from uh, TikTok and everywhere else of couples hugging, uh, people spraying themselves with perfumes, but not my, my perfumes, any perfumes that were com looking completely different. So basically he took all of those different clips, he smashed them together and then at the end of the clip, all he did is rolled out a picture, a stock picture of my product I was selling. So this, those type of videos were probably the worst type of videos I could ever had. And guess what? Those videos still generated over $30,000 in sales in first month, which was over $9,000 in profit. Videos that were not even containing my product inside them. And they worked really well. So you do not need to have UGCs for testing. The next question and last question is how much money do I need to test the products? And I'm here to tell you that it's probably going to test you anywhere from 200 to 500 plus. And for the past months, I have been trying to come up with strategy which would help you to save money and test products with $60, $100. But you know what? 
I'm coming to conclusion that it is just not possible. You have to have bigger amounts of money to actually test products so that you can feed the pixel data properly so that you can actually let TikTok to spend enough to find the audience that will work for you. Now, I know what you may think. I'm on limited budget. I don't really have money. Like, what can I do to maybe start for free, start with minimum budget? And here's the thing. I have created a separate program for you guys teaching you how to make money online without spending any of your own money up front. And in my honest opinion, this business model I'm teaching you in this program is the easiest and the best way of making money online in 2023. In fact, this is what I have been doing since 2019. This is how I make my living and this is what paid what allowed me to pay for my dropshipping journey. So what I decided to do is to give you access to one free lesson from this entire program. And this one lesson should be enough for you to start making money um, online. And then if you start getting results after watching this lesson and implementing the strategies in this lesson, then what you can do is you probably will want more, you probably want to grow this business even more, then you can come back, invest in this program, and I'm going to help you to take it to a whole new level. But for now, you can go ahead and use that free lesson, and it should be enough for you to start making money. In fact, I couple weeks ago, I recorded a whole separate video starting this exact business model completely from scratch, and I managed to make $300 in 46 hours after starting this product. What's more, I had other subscribers trying the same methods I tried in the video and they started making money as well. So this business model just works. You're going to have to put a little bit more work into it, but it works in making money online without putting any, any of your own money up front. So having that in mind, you now know how to generate cash to reinvest in your dropshipping journey. You have all of your uh, questions answered. So let's dive into this TikTok testing strategy and I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide. So the first thing you have to do is create a f first campaign, which is going to be add to cart campaign. Now, the whole purpose of this campaign is not to generate sales, but to cr test your creatives, to test your videos. Now, when I was first uh, promoting my product, out of five videos I, I actually had at the beginning, I think one or two were actually doing well. So you are going to have to test a couple different videos to see what is working. So you're creating your first campaign, which is add to cart campaign. The reason you're going with add to cart campaign, not complete purchases, is because you are going to be using brand new pixel and this pixel will have no data in it. So when you go ahead and start trying to run ads for complete purchases immediately, TikTok will not spend your budget and you're going to, this campaign will drag, it will be very slow. It's just going to be very painful. So I always start with add to cart to feed the data into the pixel so that later on uh, I can switch to complete purchases and TikTok is running everything smoothly then. So create first campaign with add to cart objective. The point of this campaign is to go broad. So target both men and women 18 plus, or if your product is specific to specific gender, then you can only focus on men or women, but mainly try to stay um, broad. Then create three to five different video ads. And if you're wondering where you can get the video ads from, I recorded a whole separate video about how to create your ads very quickly and make sure they are winners. So I'm going to leave the link into that video in the description of this video. So create three to five different video ads. Then create three to five different ad groups. Depending how many videos you have, this many ad groups you'll, you will have to create. Basically, what you want to do is you want to put one separate video in each of the ad groups. Then each of the ad groups you have to set to minimum $20 to $20. Basically, that's the minimum you can spend on, on uh, TikTok. So set each of the ad groups to $20. So now you're going to have add to cart campaign with five different ad groups spending $20 per day each. And inside each of the ad group, you have one different video, right? Great, so now that we have that done, what you want to do is to let this campaign run for at least one day. Usually one day is enough. So you're going to spend anywhere between 60 to $100, depending how many videos you have, and you're gonna have enough data to judge what to do next. 
So let it run for 24 hours and then come back after 24 hours. And here's what you want to do. Check the data. And if your ads are doing good, or if at least one of the video ads is doing good, meaning it generates cheap uh, cost per click, so 50 cents or cheaper, your ad to cart rate with this one video ad is at least 8% or more. Now, how do you find that out? What you need to do is to basically look into the analytics, see how many people added the product to the cart, divide this number by how many people clicked on this ad, then times it by 100. And this is going to give you a percentage, conversion rate of add to cart basically. If it's above 8%, that's really good. If it's above 10%, that's 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 even better. That's where you want it to be really. But eight plus is should be enough. Then check what is the uh, cost per add to cart. So if the cost per add to cart is below $5, then that's good. Ideally, you want it below two, $3. So when it's like 250, 280, 290, that is really good. But below five, it's it's still good enough. So if you have a video or a couple of videos that have those uh, type of stats, good. You can then move on to step two. But I, if after 24 hours you log in and none of the videos are, are having those stats that I just talked about, then what you have to do is you have to recreate new videos. You have to basically create a new set of videos and test them. Maybe the first videos you created were just not hitting the spot. They were just not working. So now try to recreate videos, but in a little bit different style. So try to stay uh, completely different to what you did at the very beginning. And then do this testing campaign for one more day, one more time. And if after the second time you're testing new videos, it's not working, move on to the next product, the product is just not catching on. So, um, but if after you create the second videos and it is working, then you can move on to the next step. And the next step is to choose your one winning video. So how do you choose which vi video to choose? Very often it might be confusing because you'll see like all of the videos are doing very similar and you don't know which one to really choose. It's going to be confusing. So here's what you want to look at. If any of the videos generated sales, then choose the video that generated the cheapest sale. If it didn't generate sales, which is fine because that's not the goal of the first campaign, then choose the video that generated the cheapest add to cards, right? You want to look at the end goal. It doesn't matter how much you're paying per click, how much you're paying per CPM, that doesn't matter. I had ads that were doing really well, costing me nine cents per click, but didn't generate any sales. And then on the other hand, I had ads that were costing me close to $2 per click, but were generating very profitable sales. Why? Because the videos were somehow triggering people emotionally enough to go ahead and buy. And that's what you want. You don't want clicks, you want purchases, right? So choose the video that generated sales, the cheapest sales. If there's no sales, then choose the video that generated the cheapest add to cards. Take this one video and move on to, st to step two. The step two is to create a new complete purchases campaign this time because now you have enough data. And from here, what you want to do is take this one winning video ad and you want to create three to five different ad groups. Or if you have more money, if you have more money to spend, then you can create even 10 different ad groups. And each ad group test different interests. Now you don't have to just limit yourself to one interest per ad group. What I like to do is when I was testing my perfume, I had one ad group that was testing everything to do with love. So love movies, uh, in love and all those different keywords related to love. Another, te uh, uh, group, uh, another ad group was testing interests uh, related to uh, singles. So singles dating, um, uh, and then single dating apps, and then chubby singles dating, and all those different, basically, uh, keywords re related to, to dating. And then another one was related to marriage and, and couples and stuff like that. So basically, create as many ad groups as you can, uh, as, uh, as much budget as you have, and in each of the ad groups, uh, test uh, keywords related to specific interest, right? So hopefully this is clear. 
Then what you want to do is to make sure that you turn on the targeting expansion in each of those ad groups as well. Now, why do you do that? The reason you want to test interest with expansion on is because, first of all, I want to make sure that at the very beginning, I'm directing TikTok in the right direction. So I'm kind of getting TikTok an idea of where I think my audience is. So at least TikTok has some idea of where to look for. But also with the tar targeting expansion on, I'm still letting TikTok to have the freedom of experimenting. And maybe they will see that, you know what, maybe we need to shift this audience a little bit and move on somewhere else. And when I'm turning on the targeting exp uh, expansion, the only option I'm selecting is expanding the interest. So you'll see when you start setting up this campaign, you will see there's a box that says expand interest. That's what you want to do, okay? So now you should have one campaign, with, with complete purchases campaign with three to five or maybe more uh, ad groups with diff testing different interests with expansion on and each of those ad groups has this one winning video inside it, right? Then what you want to do is to set ad spend for each of the ad groups to your break even point. What is a break even point? If you are selling a product that call that if you are selling product for $30 but pay to pay for the product to ship it to customer and to pay for transactional fees it costs you $5. That means you have $25 break even point, right? Because you can sell one product spend $25 on ads, plus spend $5 to fulfill this order, which will cost you altogether $30, but customer paid you $30 for that product as well, so you're breaking even, right? So you want to set those ads to your break even point. Now, the reason you do that is because this gives me a comfort that if I generate a sale during that day, then I know that there's at least one ad group that is at least breaking even today, right? If it generates more sales, then I know for sure today I'm going to be profitable with one ad group, right? So it helps me to stay in control. Okay, so you let it run for a day. What's happening next is after, uh, after a day, you have to come back and check the data. And most often what's going to happen is you are going to have a couple different ad groups that are generating sales. Good. What you want to do is leave them on. Don't, don't touch them. Don't increase the budget. Don't switch them off. Obviously, don't duplicate them for now. Just leave them. Those that didn't generate sales at all, what I like to do is look at the data. If I see that they have very terrible cost per click, CPM is really high, I turn them off. But... If they have somewhat good uh, uh, good CPC, so cost per click, they have pretty good results, but they just didn't generate sales, I'll let them run for another half a day, maybe a day. And the reason I do that is because sometimes it's just a very slow day. When I was selling my perfume, oftentimes I would have very slow days where I didn't make many sales, but the rest of the week was just crazy good, right? So maybe this was just a slower day. So I always give it a chance for an additional couple of hours or maybe an additional extra day, right? Day two, however, those ads that didn't generate any sales at all, I'll definitely switch them off by now, right? Those are, that did generate sales, I want to look closer if they generated profitable sales. If they are profitable or breaking even, good. I'll still keep them running. I'm not touching them for now just yet. If they generated one sale during those two days and then they didn't really generate any more sales, I'll probably switch them off as well, right? Depending on the data, if, 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 the, uh, uh, if the cost per click and add to cards are really, really good, then maybe I'll push it a little bit more, but most of the times I'll just switch it off. So at this point, when you are beginning day three, you only want to have the ads that are profitable or at least breaking even, okay? So now, here's the thing. Day three, you will either be left with no ads at all, everything was just not working. Then at this point, because you've tested so much, so many different interests, so many different video ads, and and you've tested for a cup, good couple of days, I would probably move on, right? And again, that all depends on the data. And I'm going to give you a, a, a couple different things to look at. But you will sometimes find that one to two ad groups actually are profitable. So what I would do then, 
is this. I would take this one video for this one ad group with, with specific interests and I would duplicate this one video to a new campaign three to five times, right? So in the new campaign, you're going to have this five different ad groups with the same interest and same video. I'm just trying to duplicate what's working. Then I would try to recreate the video ads so that they look, th so create more video ads based on this one vid working video ad and I would create even more ad groups for the winning interest. So now we are trying to scale a little bit, a little bit, right? Now we're trying to spend a little bit more money. So what you're doing basically is you're duplicating what it's working, but at the same time in a separate campaign, you are testing the same interest, uh, so, so the same audience, but with new ads that are similar to the winning one, but, the, but new ads, right? So now you're trying to find out even more of what is working and that's how you're scaling. But this is for a separate, separate topic. This is just testing a uh, phase. But however, if your ads after three days are just not doing well, you're not really making any money, then here are the different data points you need to look into. The first one is add to cart rate. Are people even adding your product to the cart? Because if your add to cart, cart rate with this campaign is below 5%, then people are not even adding it to cart, so your product to cart. So that means they are either they either don't like the product or maybe your offer isn't good enough. So what you could do here is try to maybe improve your offer, make more valuable offers. So add more stuff to your offer to increase its value, maybe drop the price a little bit. So in your customers, so your customers, when they look at it, it's like they think they are getting so much value, but they don't have to pay a lot. So then it might move them to, to taking action, right? So work on your offer. Or after when you work on your offer and it still doesn't work and people are not adding to cart, move on to the next product. It's just not gonna work. Or sometimes what's gonna happen is people will be adding it to card, but they will be getting to check out and not checking out. So then what you can do is to try a couple different emotional motivators. And what is that? For example, you could offer them a unique special code inside card or inside your checkout uh, and this code and, and say that this code is only valid for the next five minutes and give them like additional three or five dollars off whatever you can afford right so then th when they reach checkout and they see that there's a timer going on they have five minutes to check out or maybe even three minutes to check out but if they check out now and they use this specific code they are gonna get further discount this might push them over the edge and actually help you to start getting those sales on the other hand, maybe you're charging shipping and maybe the shipping is too expensive. So maybe try to doing free shipping instead of charging for shipping just to see what's going to happen, right? So you want to try a couple different emotional motivators at the end. If that is not going to work, again, move on to the next product because this one is just not going to work. So there you go. That's how you are testing products, guys. This is, or this is how I was testing products uh, every time I was trying to find a winner. And this is exactly how I found the Pheromones perfume that later on went to generating 190 over thousand dollars in sales with 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 this just one product. So it it works. Just put it into practice, test it, see if you like it, um, and and give it a go. Now, last thing I want to say is that. This is my testing strategy. There are many other testing strategies that might work, might, might work better or maybe work the, exactly the same, but this is what worked for me and that's why I'm using this because data showed me that it was working. So hopefully you liked this video and if you did, make sure to leave it a thumbs up. Go ahead and watch all of the other videos I mentioned in this video to get even better idea of how to start testing products and find your winner and Make sure to check out the Money Mastery program as well if you want to start making money online, which could kickstart your dropshipping journey at the same time. So that's it, video guys. So, so that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next one. Take care.